everybody, welcome to General Hospital MV, my GH after show, let's get into it. Anna and Alex squared off on Monday, resulting in Alex getting shot twice, falling into the water, and everyone assuming that she's dead without a body. Y'all, I am so sick of these kind of deaths. Leaving stories in limbo like this for an undetermined amount of time is literally the worst, because we know that she's most likely alive, just like we know that Nell is most likely alive, just like we know that Morgan is most likely alive, even though it's been four years since he's died. But we're always gonna wonder, and we're always gonna wonder why no one else is wondering that. Anyway, rant over. I gotta give it up to Finola Hughes, because even though the writing for Alex is absolute trash, she was rocking it as Alex. I mean, I loved getting to see the fire in that character. It's the same fire that Anna used to have. I kind of wish that she was still written kind of like Alex, but you know, just less villainy. Once Anna and Maxie got back to the hospital, Anna and Chase waited together to see if Finn would be okay. I gotta give it up to Josh Swickard because he rocked those emotional scenes. This is the first time that we've really gotten to see Chase emote. Like it never happens with this character, so I was just enjoying it. It was a really nice thing to see. Poor Chase really loves his brother, but I'm still kind of wondering if Finn is actually his father. Speaking of fathers, Jackie called Finn's dad to let him know that he'd been shot, and he showed up. Thankfully, Finn was already on the road to recovery, but man, was it awkward. It was hella awkward. I am intrigued to see where the storyline goes, though. Back to Anna, though. Valentine thinks it's a good idea that she keeps the fact that Alex is Peter's mom a secret from everyone, including Finn, and I'm just like, y'all, like, I just want Peter to go down. That's all I want. That's all I want, and it doesn't seem like the writers want him to go down. I'm just mad because it's like I have to accept that Robert and Spinelli are going to look like idiots forever. Thankfully, Dante's making some leeway. I mean, he put a USB into Peter's computer and copied all of his files onto it, so hopefully he finds something incriminating. All right, let's talk about the children. Now, Dev is proving more and more each day that he is going to grow up to become a psychopath. He tried to make a move on Jocelyn and she turned him down and he flipped out over it. He was dissing Cameron and dissing Jocelyn and saying that no one will ever live up to Oscar. I really hate this 180 that they've done with Dev because he seemed like such a good guy and I really liked to see them as like the new four musketeers on the show, but clearly that's not going to happen. What a mess. Just like that scene between Alexis and Ned this week, for some reason, Ned didn't realize that Alexis was drunk on the night that they slept together. I'm like, how? Like, you seen how she was acting. She was acting like a mess. You didn't taste the vodka on her breath. I'm like, how did he not know she was drunk? At least Alexis was able to give Ned some sage advice. Not that he'll follow it, but she said that there is nothing more devastating than finding out the person you love is carrying a secret. She said he better fess up or hope to God that no one else tells Olivia about Ned and Alexis's one night stand. Monica and Brooklyn know, and it's only a matter of time before someone else does. Ned and Brooklyn were able to find some common ground this week. Brooklyn was actually going to move back in with her mother to uh, Bensonhurst and Chase was able to convince her to go and work things out with her father instead. Brooklyn said that she would, but only as long as Chase admits his feelings to Willow. Chase actually admitted to Brooklyn that he and Sasha staged their affair, and she said that it's only fair that Willow make the choice to choose between Michael and Chase with all the information given. Unfortunately for Chase, Michael and Willow admitted to each other that they thought that they were hot and had sex in Wiley's playroom. Kinda gross, not a fan. And poor Chase walked in on round two. Chase just can't catch a break this week, y'all. Yeesh, I feel like I've just kind of complained this whole time, but I swear I enjoyed the rest of the week. I swear, let's talk about it. Jason dragged Julian over to Sonny's house so that he can confront him on being on the docks with Nell. Ava barged in to protect her brother as well. But Julian played it smart and mentioned Taggart and that he would let Cyrus know that Taggart was alive if anything were to happen to him. So for now, Julian is safe. I'm not gonna lie, knowing that William DeVry is out, I actually thought that this might have been it for him. Him, but he played it smart. I do love that Ava went into mama bear mode when it came to Trina. Obviously, she doesn't want Julian to mention to Cyrus that Tiger is alive ever because Trina has already gone through so much as it is. The downside is, at some point, it is going to come out that Tiger is alive. Maybe it's when Cyrus is defeated, if he gets defeated. But Trina's going to eventually learn that Ava did know that Tiger was alive. So that's going to crush her, and I really like Trina and Ava's friendship. Alright, now before we completely deep dive into Cyrus Land, let's quickly talk about Franco and Elizabeth. 
Franco surprisingly admitted to Elizabeth that the tumor is back. I was actually shocked. That is growth, Franco. Congratulations. I did have to gag a little bit because Elizabeth was like, don't worry, our love will save us. Girl, if he starts acting crazy, you and your kids better get out of there. Ooh, my love is stronger than your tumor, Franco. Shut up, Elizabeth. This is nonsense. Don't be stupid. Now, y'all know I don't like Franco, and y'all know that I have no use for Roger Howarth, and that I think he's overrated, and that I really don't like that him and Frank Valentini are so close, but I gotta give credit where credit is due. I think that Roger Howarth did a great job this week presenting how scared Franco was. Like he, it was top notch acting, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was really good performance. See that? And I didn't even choke on it. All right, now let's dive into Cyrus Land, starting with Curtis and Jordan's investigation. They are in Astoria, Oregon, and they are at an abandoned house that looks strangely a lot like Carly's old house, as well as Luke's childhood house, because they thought we wouldn't notice that they're using the same set over and over again. Yes, some of us do notice these things, GH. Do better. Curtis actually found a half burnt letter that was from from Cyrus addressed to whoever lives there and he does say that he loves that person. So they believe that this person is Cyrus's Achilles heel. Soon after, someone shows up at the house and it's Laura freaking Collins! Jeannie Francis is back, I'm so happy! Now supposedly, even though Laura was out in Washington on a fundraising trip, she did use that as a cover to continue to look into Cyrus. That's how she ended up at that house. Now, Jordan has to confess everything that's happened, except for the fact that Taggart is alive, but she does confess that she has been under Cyrus's thumb the whole time, and Laura is not pleased by it. Jordan did say that she is not the police commissioner that Port Charles deserves, and I'm pretty sure that most fans would probably agree, but the three of them are at least agreeing to work together on this one. But Jordan then shows Laura the redacted case from over 40 years ago that Cyrus wants for some reason, and Laura is definitely really nervous about it. She doesn't say anything to them, but she clearly knows what this case was about. When Laura leaves the house, she calls someone saying, we're in trouble. Now, a lot of GH historians believe that this case could possibly be the David Hamilton case that happened back in the 70s when Laura was a teenager. She actually murdered David Hamilton and Leslie took the blame for it. So people think that Leslie might be on the phone. Personally, I think it might be Scott Baldwin. I don't know if Leslie's gonna come back for the story. It would make sense that she does, but given all the cast cuts lately, I don't know if they'll take a veteran of that stature back on the show right now. So that's why I think that they'll use Scotty for the storyline because I don't really know the whole story. It's hard to find any footage from like mid 70s of GH on YouTube. But just based on what I know, I know that Scott knows about the situation. So does Luke, but again, I don't think Luke's ever going to come back to the show again, so Scott seems to be the safe bet. Now, if this is true, because we don't know if it is yet, but it does seem kind of likely that this is what's going to happen, I have to give the writers props for deep diving into GH history from that long ago to utilize it in a current story. Because I'm really tired of the rewrites that we always get, so it's nice to see them pulling from actual history instead of making things up as they go along. Although I probably just jinxed it, we'll see I guess. Either way, Laura better get back to Port Charles ASAP because Cyrus Renault was not too happy with the posts that Lulu made about a war brewing between Sonny and Cyrus. I'm... Uh, Y'all know what I think about this. I do not want Lulu to die, but it looks like she's going to die. You can't just kill off Luke and Laura's daughter, even if I don't like the actress that plays her, okay? Your major claim to fame, GH, was Luke and Laura, so if you kill off one of her kids, that's just gonna look bad on you guys. Oh, all right, let's get into Sasha Gilmore. This girl is a mess, and she meets up with Cyrus at the Metro Court and makes sure that Nina and Carly and Jax all see it, Carly is super concerned, concerned enough to go to Brando and, you know, kind of whisper to keep an eye on her, and also to go to Sunny and Jason to talk about what's going on. Carly talks to Jason about how she thinks that Cyrus is giving Sasha drugs and that she's playing a very dangerous game. Sunny is very quiet during this conversation, and when Carly leaves, Sunny actually mentions that it hits close to home because of what he did to Karen Wexler in the 90s. Long story short, he dangled drugs to an underage girl, he slept with her, he was a pretty bad man, and he hasn't really acknowledged knowledge just how much of a scumbag that he used to be because the show tends to write him as like this good mobster but you know he wasn't always whitewashed as much as he is now. Nina actually told Cyrus to back off too by the way I forgot to mention that but anyway back to just Cyrus and uh, and uh, and Sasha he dangles more drugs in front of her face and she agrees to go back to his house with him. Brando actually did try to tell Cyrus that she is trouble that he doesn't need and he thanks him but is like, you need to go. Thankfully, Brando stays behind, but anyway, whatever drugs Cyrus gave Sasha must have been some good shit because she was flying high 
and she was ready to jump his bones. Side note, I really loved the song that Sasha was dancing to, so stay tuned, I'm gonna upload it on the General Hospital Jukebox YouTube page. Anyway, back to it. When Sasha was dancing to that song and laughing really hard, I knew something tragic was about to happen. She basically throws herself on Cyrus, and Cyrus is like, whoa, are you trying to punish yourself or someone else? And Sasha didn't take too kindly to that, so she freaks out and yells at him, and then she has a heart attack. I knew it! I knew the second that she started to take drugs that she would be a victim of Cyrus. She hasn't died yet, but I'm pretty sure that's where we're going. Ooh, my blood boiled when he shouted, for God's sakes not here. I was like, dude, you are a scumbag. Thankfully Brando was there for that. I don't know how he's going to handle the situation because if he just straight up goes to Sonny and Jason with this, Cyrus is going to know that Brando brought that information to him. So we'll see how this plays out Monday. Last but not least, let's touch base on Nina's search for her child. The real Phyllis Caulfield showed up to talk to Jackson and Nina. Nina recognized her right away, and Phyllis came clean with everything that she knew about the baby. To sum it up quickly, she knew that Nina gave birth to a healthy baby girl, and that it was given up for adoption. Phyllis actually took that baby to the new parents who lived in northern Florida. She said the mother was absolutely beaming and she had no doubt that they would take care of her. She also mentioned that she gave the baby that half-hearted necklace just in case she'd want to look for Nina one day. I'm so mad because all the signs really do point to Nell being her daughter. I'm still holding out hope for Willow, but oh, it's not looking good. As you guys know, Avery currently has a necklace because she found it in the woods. Carly sees that she has a necklace and she flashes back to a scene of her and Nina discussing the half-hearted necklace. And when they're out of that scene, she's like, oh, it's Nell. I'm like, wait a minute, how did she jump to that conclusion from that flashback of her and Nina's conversation? It would have made more sense to show the fight between Carly and Nell again because she was wearing the necklace then. Like, huh? It made no sense, but obviously we're getting to the meat and potatoes of the storyline. I don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but here's my guess. I think that Carly will tell Jax the truth, and Jax won't tell Nina the truth to protect her, but somehow Nina's going to find out anyway, and Jax is going to be under fire for it, and then maybe she'll jump back to Valentine's arms. God, I hope not. Furthermore, because I think that Sasha is going to die, and that Nell, for now, is dead, she is going to blame herself for not being able to do anything to help Nell, and to not being able to save Sasha either. So maybe she'll be on the verge of a breakdown herself. That is my theory though. What is your guys' theory on what's going to happen next? Let me know in the comments below. That wraps it up for GHMV. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. And I will catch you guys later this week. Peace out. This is where your life begins. Uh...